Welcome back to The Code Wolf. In today's video, we're going to explore one of my favorite topics on the channel so far, which is how to host your own AI model for free. So I'm sure you're all aware that there are various cloud AI services out there, such as Azure and OpenAI, that have models like GPT-4 just ready to go. Well, in this video, we're going to explore an alternative to using these services. We'll walk through a simple example of how you can very easily pick an AI model and host it yourself in the cloud or even on-prem for free instead of using one of those services. And we'll also discuss all the reasons you might want to do that. There's so many cool things we need to talk about here, so let's get started. Please remember to subscribe to support the channel for more AI, coding, and cloud content. These videos are a lot of work to produce. We're almost at 3,000 subscribers. Let's grow this channel into something special. So in terms of prereqs for this video, you'll need to have a basic understanding of what AI models like GPT-4 are, what Docker development containers are, and understand basic web dev concepts like hosting services and HTTP requests. The overall process to get this setup working can be broken into three high-level steps that involve these three different technologies. So first, we need to understand how to set up Olama, which is a tool that lets you pick from a large library of AI models and run them locally on a server or personal computer. Olama is also available as a container, which means it can be easily hosted on services like Azure Container Apps or on your own server, so we'll see how to deploy it ourselves. Interestingly, Olama also provides an API that allows you to send requests to it through curl or other HTTP clients so we'll also see how to create a basic app that connects to that web service. Many local AI models are free to use, and many cloud container services also have a free tier at surprisingly high request volumes, which is why this overall setup can be free to an extent. Now, you don't need to watch any other videos to follow along with this tutorial, but if you want additional context or a simple introduction to Olama and local AI models, I do have another video on my channel that walks through those exact topics. For now, let's get started with the demo. I know that's why everyone is here. And then at the end, we'll also explore reasons why you might want to create this setup in the first place. All right, so first let's explore the Olama portion of this. So kind of what this tool is, how it works, and how we're gonna use it to complete our setup here. So you'll wanna go out to olama.com and download this and install it. It's a pretty standard uh, process. And if you want, you can look around this site. Again, I have a different video that kind of goes into more depth of Olama and how to get started, but you can explore the available AI models on their site. So we're gonna be using one of these models. And then their documentation is mostly out on GitHub. So once you have that installed, um, I'm gonna open up a terminal here and zoom in. So we can, of course, run the Olama command, and this will give us a list of everything that we can do with this tool. So for example, we can say Olama run, and so you could do Olama run. And we'll be using the Phi 3 uh, mini model for this demo. So it's a pretty small AI model, but it can do a lot of things with only a couple gigabytes of data and download to get that model installed. Now I already have all this running here. So you can see I did an Olama run Phi 3. Uh, right now this is using medium for this uh, particular instance, but that doesn't matter for the video. So I can just say something like, write me a haiku and Olama is going to print out a result uh, pretty quickly for us here right in the console. Now this in itself is pretty cool, but this is all just local. What if we want to host this out on a web service and either host this model or any of the models here? What if we want to just deploy one of these and have it available to our apps and different services out on the web? Well, that's actually pretty easy to do. And there's two core concepts to understand here about Olama that make this possible. One is the REST API, which is surprisingly easy to use. So there's a couple examples here. And so I have written those out here as well. And so if we grab this first uh, curl command here, so curl just lets us run uh, requests against an endpoint here. So if we go over into bash, and I'll just paste this in here. And so we're targeting our local model that's running right here on our computer. And we're saying target the mini model that I had started up and we say, write me a haiku. And you can see it does respond, but it's actually sending this one word at a time, which is not super readable. So we can modify these rest requests. So I could say something like uh, stream is false. So I'll copy this again and I'll run it. 
And now this time it'll just give us the completed response back all at once, which is probably closer to what we'll want. Uh, so that you can see it says whispers of the breeze, uh, dancing in autumn, peaceful harmony. So it wrote us a haiku over that REST API, which is really useful if we want to talk about hosting this out on the web. Now, the last concept to understand is that Olama is available as a Docker image, and this opens up all kinds of possibilities. So a Docker image is sort of like a self-contained pod of dependencies for a tool or an app. And so you can just run the container here with this command. So you could say Docker run Olama and bind the default Olama port, which is 11434. Now, what's so cool about these combination of features is that this means we can just host the container out on the web and start making requests to it and forward those to the Olama API. So let's see how to do that. Okay, so now we're out on Azure and we're going to create a container app. So container apps are sort of the go-to choice for hosting containers uh, out on Azure. There are other options for different scenarios, but this is kind of always a good choice. And you can get to that by just searching for container apps here, and then you'll want to click on create. And that'll take you to this page. And we want to walk through these settings because these actually do matter for the setup we're trying to create. So let's call this Llama Wolf 2 or something like that, which actually sounds like a really bad horror movie. But anyways, um, and then we're going to say that we're going to deploy a container image. So this is what the container app will actually run. Uh, we don't want to use source code or an artifact. We want to use a container. And then we'll just go to East US 2. That's fine for our region. And we'll also create a new container apps environment. So this is kind of the shell around the container app that takes care of um, certain resourcing and network type concerns. So we'll just call this uh, Llama Wolf ENV and then click create. And that'll give us a new container apps environment. Then let's click next. So this will take us to the actual container settings. And we don't want to use a quick start image. We actually want to use a specific container. And we're going to say that that's going to come from Docker Hub because remember, we just looked at this Docker image for Olama that's out there. And we want to provide the Olama slash Olama uh, image. So right up here, you can see this is Olama slash Olama. We'll leave most of this fine. I'm going to beef up the resources here a little bit since we are running an AI model. And I'll leave this at consumption. So let's then go to bindings. Uh, we won't worry about this for now, but we do want to worry about ingress. So we'll click enabled. And this will basically set up the traffic from the web so that it can hit our container and can be forwarded to the Olama uh, instance and all that. Most of these we can leave at default. But the important one here is this target port. So we want to set this to 11.434, and that's the default port that the Olama server runs on inside the container. So this will essentially map requests here um, and allow us to access that REST API that we looked at. And then we don't need to worry about tags. So we'll go to our final screen here, and then we'll click Create. And this is going to go out and create that container app environment and the container itself and pull that image and all that goodness. So let's just give this a few minutes to finish and let that go to work. Okay, so once that finish is deploying, we'll land on our container app overview page. So we've got our Llama Wolf 2 app running, and we can verify that with this application URL. So let's actually open this in a new tab here. So I'll open this up. But right now you'll see that we actually get a 404, and that's because there's one other setting that we have to configure. We got most of it during setup, but it looks like there's one additional thing. We have to allow uh, this app to accept traffic from anywhere so that we can do these external browser requests. Obviously, when you set this up in a real app, you'll want to take a look at the security and network settings and make sure these are set up properly. But again, we're just kind of trying to get a basic setup working here. So I'm going to save that and update our ingress to make the app available. And once that finishes, let's head back to our overview page and let's open up this application URL one more time. And this time we'll see we get this message that says Olama is running. So our container is successfully working and we know it's Olama, so that's great. But just because the Olama server is running doesn't mean that our model is running and accepting those API requests. So let's go all the way down to console here. And this is a really cool feature of Azure Container Apps where you can actually just kind of directly uh, get a terminal login into your container app. So I'll hit connect here and zoom out a little bit so we have a little more room here. And so now we're just in a terminal in our container, which is really cool. So if I run Olama, you can see, sure enough, there's all our familiar commands that we were getting, uh, just like when we were running locally on our computer here. So from here, I'm going to say 
Olama Run Phi 3 Mini. And Azure's going to go ahead and pull that for us. It's got a lot of bandwidth here, so it'll download a couple gigabytes really quickly. Um, and so let's give that a minute to finish. And after a second, sure enough, we can send messages to our running model. So I could say, write me a haiku, and it's going to come back really quickly. So there it is. Now, I do want to mention that, again, we're doing kind of a manual step-by-step -step approach from this. There are ways to automate this, um, where you could have the container kind of run this and start up and just do all this automatically when it deploys. But I want to show you what's actually going on here. So now we have our container running, and it's ready to accept API requests. So the last thing we have to do is actually create an app or run commands to hit that. So let's go back to our overview. And we want to grab this application URL that's kind of the main uh, endpoint for our application. And let's go back to our sample curl commands here. So I'm going to replace this uh, URL here. For, this is an old uh, testing one here. And I'm going to replace that with our new URL. So we have our curl command that hits this Azure Container app. So then let's go over to bash, and I'll just clear this out so we have a nice blank screen, and paste in this curl request and run it. And sure enough, there it is. We have our haiku coming back from our Azure service. So this is actually really cool. We've hosted our own AI model and opened that up for requests from a terminal or from an app. So speaking of an app, um, I wrote this really simple little .NET app. And this actually goes out and connects to our API service, just like our, our curl command did. So let's grab this base URL that we're working with. And we're going to plug that in here. So there we go. And then let's walk through what this code actually does. So first, we get the user prompt. So we just use a console.readline. And then we assemble an Olama request. So I've created this uh, class down here that just sort of replicates what we were doing with our curl command. So you can see we had these three parameters that we were sending to our API. Well, now those are represented in a model here. So we have our model name and the prompt and whether or not we want to stream the result. So uh, we can just set stream here to false for now. So this will just kind of be a traditional request back and forth. But we're targeting that Phi 3 mini model that we started in our Azure Container Apps terminal. And then we'll send the user prompt along with the request here. So we're gonna use our HTTP client and post as JSON. So we're sending um, our model here that we assembled as JSON. And we're gonna send that to the endpoint that we opened up on Azure. And then we're gonna read the response back and parse that into an Olama response. So this returns the model, the time that it was created at, and most importantly, the actual response from our AI. And that allows us to write out that response to our console. And this is all in a while loop. So we can kind of keep talking back and forth uh, with the AI. So really basic setup here. You could obviously expand this to be much more robust, but I just want to show you that this is working and we can write custom requests in an app to our self-hosted AI. So I'm going to run this and this will open up a little console for us. So it's going to ask us for our prompt and I'll say, write me a haiku about a sad samurai. So let's see what it comes up with. This will take a second because it's going to generate the entire response before it sends it back since we turned off streaming. So we've got this nice little haiku back from the AI and we can start asking other things. So we could say, write me a description of a samurai or something like that. And it's going to come back with a response again. And so we've got sort of a mini chat setup going here, but obviously you could expand this uh, and make it more powerful. So eventually we got our response back. It actually gave this really long description about Samurais, uh, but you could re refine this uh, further if you want a shorter response. But the main point here is that we've got our setup working and hopefully you can see the potential of this. So now that we have our own AI service deployed, let's further explore why you might want to do this in the first place. As I already mentioned, this setup can potentially save you a lot of money since some hosting services like Azure Container Apps have a generous free tier sometimes up to millions of requests, which is huge. And after that, the pricing is very cheap, but obviously you'll want to compare the cost against other options. Another reason you might choose this approach is if you can't find the model you want to work with readily available through a hosting provider. The library of models is growing every day out there, but that doesn't necessarily mean there's a ready-to-go cloud service version of it. There are also potentially security benefits to this setup. With the approach we just demonstrated, although your traffic still goes over the cloud and the web, the AI itself is local to your hosting service, 
so you don't have to worry about your data being tracked by a service version of an AI or used in unauthorized training of a larger system and so on. Most cloud providers obviously include details about their data privacy policies, but it's still something to explore. You could also host the entire AI model and service on your own servers without the cloud, further improving your security. And finally, some people might prefer this option just because of the level of control it provides. It opens up all kinds of possibilities in terms of networking, resource allocation, security, model behaviors and training, and so on. So I hope you enjoyed this scenario. There's a lot to expand on and experiment with here. So let me know what you'd like to see in the comments. Please subscribe and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.